Shalom family, shalom. I'm coming to you guys today with another video and I'm so excited to do this video. I mean, it took me a week, almost a week researching this to prove this, okay? This is going to be an in-depth video. I was going to make it in two parts because I know some people have a short attention span, but I figured that I'll get it all out of the way. So, you know, I please hear the whole matter. Um, please hear the whole matter. Please have patience and watch this whole video. This is very important. This is very important. We're going to be talking about those who say that they are Jews and are not, that are of the synagogue of Satan. And we're going to talk about why the scripture says that about the Jewish people that are there in the land um, today why they're not the true Jews, and why the Negroes are. Now, during my research in this and my genealogy, I got discouraged. And I'm, I'm going to tell you guys why I got discouraged when we get to that point. So last night, and this was yesterday, so last night I prayed and I said, well, maybe we aren't the true people. Maybe we're just losing our minds. Okay. And, um... Yeah, and I, I prayed to God and I said, you know, just please reveal what need to be revealed. And today I'm at work and I've still been researching. And and if I don't, um, I BS you not, I don't want to curse, that it has all come together, okay? It has all come together. So please hear the whole matter, okay? So we're going to start with first proving that the Jews that are in the land are not the true Jews, Let's talk about this. And let me tell you guys first what, what led me to this. And here we have Hitler. It says Hitler's confession. I want to talk to you guys about why Hitler said that the Negroes were the true Jews or Israelite. So it says Hitler said even in his death he will start World War III. One of his soldiers asked how. Hitler replied, the day mankind finds out what I was trying to defend this nation, Germany, from then that's the day World War Three will start. For on that day, mankind will learn that I was trying to save my nation from the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Jews, the Jewish, okay, meaning pertaining to Jews. Now, they are pertaining to Jews, and we're going to talk about all of this, but they are not the people for a certain reason, and we're going to get, I'm the, I don't want to give too much away, because <laughs> y'all got to listen. And say, I was trying to save my nation from the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Jews. For if the Americans win the war, then they will conquer the world and forever be a slave to the Jews. And they will try to conquer God. Do you know who America has in its possession? No, the soldier replied. The Americans have the jewels of God. The Americans have stolen God's precious jewels. What do you mean his precious jewels? The soldier asked. Hitler said, America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry. The Negroes, they are the true Jews. Now, let's get into this. What led me on this hunt? I was um, doing my, I was on Jed Match, just doing my, my thing. Just, you know, looking at my DNA. And I was going through all the tests. They have like different tests. And I did the African only test, which is what we're looking at right now. The African only test. And if you can see the last one you see, is Western Semitic, 18.71%. Western Semitic. So I, I started to compare this with my um, ancestry DNA. You know, ancestry DNA, they give you the modern DNA. To get the ancient people, I would go to Jed Match or My True Ancestry which has given me a lot of stuff as well. I'm going to be showing you all of this genealogy today and how we can prove that Negroes are the true Israelites and that the Jewish people in the land are not the Jewish people. So let's, so you can see that's Western Semitic. So when I seen that, it started me on this whole journey of trying to go back and do the genealogy of these people and figure out, you know, how can we prove that these people are the Negroes and not the Jewish people that are in the land today. So let's start with proving that they are not the people. Now, to to begin, we got to understand that um, the scripture said that we were not supposed to marry among the people of 
the land of Canaan. Okay. No, but I got to get my stuff pulled up. I got so much pulled up because, like I said, y'all, I've been researching this for uh, for a whole week almost. I've been really into my genealogy. I did my DNA test, and I've been just still just doing my genealogy and just getting into all of that. Now, let me find this where I was looking for. Where is it? Oh, okay, I was on it. Now, as I compare my DNA to my ancestry DNA, they have Congo on there. And that is my probably my Nigerian, which was on my ancestry DNA. So I started to let I said, okay, so where did this 20% um, Western Semitic come from? So I started, you know, comparing it with my ancestry DNA. I have 20% Cameroon, Congo, and Bantu peoples. So I looked up Cameroon, um, and they did not have, based on DNA, um, any Jewish heritage. So I looked up the Bantu people. When I looked up the Bantu people, it says that... Um, the limba which on my true ancestry let's let, let me just show y'all that real quick on my true ancestry it says i'm part of the limba tribe so it say my ancient populations let me just show y'all my ancient populations are the yoruba yoruba plus the khoisan the bantu plus yoruba and the bantu plus khoisan now we're going to talk about the Khoisan people, the Khoisan people, and it? it is very important. But um, you can see I'm Bantu, right? And when we go to, let's see, that's ancient populations, modern populations, you see number one is Limba. So Limba, Bantu, Bantu Southwest, Bantu Southeast, Mandinka, Biaka Pygmy, Sub-Saharan, and Yoruba. So Limba was one. So let's go back to the Bantu people. Okay. I got so much stuff pulled up, y'all, because we, we, that's why I said this might need to be a two part video because it's just so much to talk about. So I looked into the Limba people and come to find out that they are connected to Israelites through the paternal line. So I say the Limba, Rimba, Sina, you know, I can't pronounce that, Mwenye, are a Bantu-speaking ethnic group which is native to Zimbabwe and South Africa with small branches in Mozambique and Malawi, according to Tudor Parfit. When he first worked in the field among the Limba in South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Malawi in the 1980s, they numbered an estimated 50,000. They speak the same Bantu languages with their geographic neighbors speak, and they also bear a physical resemblance to their geographic neighbors. But some of their religious practices and beliefs are similar to the Jewish and Islamic practices and beliefs, according to Parfit. The Limba claimed they once had a book which described their traditions, but it was lost. And we're going to talk about how the Bantu people got um, Israelite DNA in them. So since the late 20th century, there has been increased media and scholarly attention with regard to the Limba's claim of common descent from the Jewish people. Genetic Y-DNA analysis in 2000s have established a partially Middle Eastern or origin for the majority of the male Limba population. Tudor Parfit has suggested that the name Limba may originate in Chalimba, a Swahili word for the turbans which are worn by some Bantu men, or may originate from Limbi, a Bantu term for non-African or respected foreigner. Their myths of origin state that their ancestors migrated from the north. According to Limba traditions, their, man, their male ancestors were Jews who left Judea about 25,000 years ago and settled in a place called Sina. Which, 2125 Lenshire near Burkhard room 2125. Burkhard room 2125. Sorry, y'all. I am at work. I do have to keep my walkie on in case any of my residents call. But right now it's lunchtime. So we sh I shouldn't get any interruptions. Burkhard room 2125. 
Okay, so let's say, according to the Limba tradition, their male ancestors were Jews who left Judea about 25,000 years ago and settled in a place called Sina, which was located on the Arabian Peninsula in present-day Yemen. Much later, according to uh, Rudo, their oral history states that their ancestors migrated into northeast Africa, Ethiopia. After their ancestors married local women and became established in Africa, at some point the tribe split into two groups. One group stayed in Ethiopia and the other group traveled farther south along the coast. According to Parfit, who published the books on his findings in 1993, the Sina most likely located in Yemen. Specifically, it was located in the village of Sana'a, which is located within the easternmost portion of the Hadramat. This city has been home to a Jewish population since ancient times, since the founding of the state of Israel in 1948, as well as since later wars. The Jewish community of Yemen has dwindled to a few hundred. In Limba tradition, Sina has the semi-mythical status of being a sacred city of origin, and as a result, it is also the object of hopes for their eventual return. Now, see, according to the Limba oral tradition their male ancestors migrated to southeast africa in order to obtain gold the limba claim their second group settled in tanzania and kenya now kenya came up on my my heritage dna at about eight percent building what one second please family yes hey could you meet me on the first floor in the um office please not the nurse's station but the aid uh office Yep. Okay, family, give me a minute and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, family. I had to help my supervisor do something. I wasn't expecting them to call me during lunch. That's why I tried to do this video during lunch. But we should be good now. Okay. Because I could have waited till I got home, but I was just too excited. I, my anxiety, like, went through the roof. I couldn't sit still. <laughs> The spirit was on me. <laughs> okay, so let's finish reading. Let's say, according to the Limba oral tradition, the Limba claimed that the second group settled in Tanzania and Kenya, building what re was referred to as another Sina or Sina II. Others supposedly settled in Malawi, where their descendants reside today. Some settled in Mozambique, eventually migrating to Zimbabwe and South Africa. They claimed that their ancestors constructed Great Zimbabwe, now preserved as a monument. Ken Mukuf M Mufuka, a Zimbabwean archaeologist, believes that, e the, that either the Limba or the Venda may have participated in this archaeological archeolo project, but he does not believe that they were solely responsible for its completion. I'm out here to say, but most academics who are experts in this field believe that the construction of the enclosure of Great Zimbabwe is largely attributable to the ancestors of the Shona, who were the first people to displace the indigenous sand people. Now, the sand people is the Khoisan, okay? And we're going to talk about them. Now, I want to um, talk about... The reason why we're reading this, because I want to show y'all something, okay? According to Y Chromosome Studies by Amanda B., the Limba are paternally most closely related to semitic speaking populations in western asia haplogroup group j equals 51.7 percent central and southern asians uh it got ltkrf equal 24.5 percent with minor contributions from bantu speaking males now haplogroup group j does come up in my ancestor my um i'm gonna show y'all It comes up in my true ancestry. Why DNA breakdown? So you see, um, minus T L T. So we got T R T R one B R one A L T J G E two E one B B two A one and A zero. So you can see we got J at five point four nine percent. Now, 
back to this the reason why we're reading about this because i want to the reason they tried they say that the limba are not israelites because let's see because I say a study which was conducted by Himla observed that the non-African Y component in the limbo is around 73.7% to 79.6%. Overall, the study shows that Y chromosomes, which are typically linked to Jewish ancestry, were not detected through their highest resolution analysis. It seems more likely that Arab traders who were known to have established long-distance trade networks which stretch thousands of kilometers along the western rim of the Indian Ocean, from Sofala in the south to the Red Sea in the north and beyond to Hadramut to India and even to China from about 900 AD, are more likely linked with the ancestry of the non-African founding males of the Limba. Okay, so hold on. Say, in order to more specifically define the Limba people's origin, Parfit and other researchers conducted a large study in order to compare additional Limba subjects whose clans were recorded with males from South Arabia and Africa, as well as Ashkenazi and Shepardi Jews. They found that significant similarities exist between the markers of the Limba and the markers of the men of Hadramat in Yemen. They also learned that the population of Sina, Yemen, was relatively recent, so its members and the Limba would not have shared common ancestors. A subsequent study, which was conducted in 2000, revealed that a substantial number of Limba men carry a haplotype of the Y chromosome, which is known as the Cohen, the Cohen model haplogroup, as well as the haplogroup of Y DNA haplogroup J, which is found in some Jews, as well as in other populations which live across the Middle East and Arabia. The genetic studies have found no Semitic female contribution to the Limba gene pool. So. I'm looking for something specific here. Maybe it's coming up. So I say that they have no Semitic female contribution to the limba gene pool. Among Jews, the CM CMH marker is most prevalent in Kohanim or hereditary priests. As recounted in Limba oral tradition, members of the Buba clan had a leadership role in bringing the Limba out of Israel. The genetic study found that 50% of the males in the Buba clan had the Kohan marker, a proportion which is higher than that which is found in the general Jewish population. More recently, Mendez observed that a moderately high frequency of studied limba samples carry Y-DNA haplogroup, which is also considered to be of Near Eastern origin. Haplogroup T. Okay, the limba T carriers exclusively belong to the T1B, which is rare and was not sampled in indigenous Jews of either the Near East or North Africa. T1B has been observed in low frequencies in the Ashkenazi Jews as well as in the Levantine populations. Okay. Where is it? Where is it? So it was something in here that was talking about maybe we missed it. Gen, gen culture. So they say the genetic mtDNA data of the limba has not shown any descent from female Jewish ancestors. Now, it was something. Where is it? Basically, they were saying that the Jewish don't accept them as uh, Jews because, um, okay, here it is. In Orthodox Judaism, 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 Judaism Halak Jewish status is determined by documenting an unbroken material matrilineal line of descent and when no such line of descent, ex, uh, descent exists it is determined by conversion it is determined by conversion to judaism 
Jews who adhere to Orthodox or conservative rabbinism believe that Jewish status by birth is only passed from a Jewish female to her children. If she herself is a Jew by birth or a Jew by conversion to Judaism, regardless of the Jewish status of the father, because of the absence of matrilineal Jewish descent for the Limba, Orthodox or conservative Judaism would not recognize them as halakhly Jewish. The Limba would need to complete a formal conversion process in order to be accepted as Jews. Now, this is important because the Jews, the Jewish people understand that to be an Israelite, it, it goes through the mother's line. Now, I know a lot of y'all about to talk about you are what your father is and all of that, but that's not how the scripture says that the Israelite line work. Even in Tobit, it says, Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribes. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even they all married wives of their own kindred, and were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. And it's talking about the female line, seed shall inherit the land. Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren and despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, and not taking a wife of them. For in pride is destruction and much trouble, and in lewdness is decay and great want. For lewdness is the mother of famine. Now, let's talk about how, how ironic this is for the Jewish people, because they also don't have a matrilineal line of Jewishness. Okay, I believe that the Jews, um, the reason why they carry the Y chromosome is because they are from Judah. Let's see, where is it? They are from Judah, but through the Canaanite woman that Judah um, had sons with. Now I say the sons of Shelah, the son of Judah, were Er, the father of Lacah. And Lada and the father of Mirisha and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen of the house of Ashbia. Now Judah had he married, and the sons of Judah after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Perez, the family of the Ferites, and Zerah, the family of the Zerahites. Now remember, Judah had three sons by a Canaanite woman, which was uh, Er, Onan, and Sheila. Sheila became the uh, ancestor of the Shilonites, which I believe is where the Jewish people descend from. Because when you look at their DNA, let's just find it here. I had to pull it up. I'm going to start closing some of these windows out so it's easier for me to look up with the, what I'm looking up. So, I say... The Torah relates that Judah went to a man named Hira in the city of Adalam, where he married Shua's daughter, who was the daughter of a certain Canaanite. The rabbis explain that a certain Canaanite, literally a Canaanite man, teaches that Shua was from the area where he was the light of the people's eyes. One tradition identifies the Adulamite Hera with Haram, who lived in the time of David, of whom it is said, for Haram had always been a friend of David. Already in Judah's time, this man had learned to love this tribe, but some rabbis reject this proposed identification. The rabbis viewed Judah's marriage to the daughter of Shua as a decline, which Genesis 38, one records. Judah left, literally went down from his brothers. With this marriage, Judah portrayed the way of his forefathers as it is portrayed in Malachi 2.11. Judah has broken faith. Abhorrent things have been done in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profound, uh, have profaned what is holy to the Lord, what he desires, and espoused daughters of alien gods. He married the daughter of an idolater and thereby betrayed the way of Israel. So let's get this in Malachi 2, which I think I got pulled up somewhere. I'm going to exit out of this because we don't need that no more. Exit out of that because we don't need that no more. Malachi 2. Where it says, Judah have dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah have profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and have married the daughter of a strange God. 
the Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. And this have you done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and with crying out and so much that he regardeth not the offering any more, receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet you say, wherefore, because the Lord have been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against thou hast dealt unfaithful, unfaithfully, treacherously, yet is she the companion and the wife of thy covenant. So Judah married a Canaanite woman. He had three sons by her, two which died. Remember, they, they married Tamar um, and they both died. Well, the first one died and then the second one was supposed to go into her so that they could have she can have children. And remember, he pulled out and spilled the semen or whatever, and God killed him. So then Judah said, okay, well, when my son Sheila, Shayla, however you want to pronounce it, grow up, you can marry him. But remember, he didn't end up marrying her. Remember, he ended up, she tricked him into sleeping with him, and then he had Perez and um, Zara. So Judah had three living sons, one was the Shelanites, okay? One was Sheila, and he became the forefather of the Shelanites. Now, when you look at the DNA of the Jewish people, it say, the study has shown that the Canaanite population contributed to most present-day Jewish groups and Levantine Arabic-speaking groups. These populations are consistent with having 50% or more of their ancestry from people related to groups who lived in the Bronze Age Levant. So I say the study has shown that the Canaanite population contributed to most present day Jewish groups. So it's telling you that the Jewish people have more than 50 percent uh, Canaanite heritage. And that's because Judah married a Canaanite woman. So they are descendants of Judah, but again, they can't be Israelites because they don't have the matrilineal line. Just as they are saying about the Limba not having the matrilineal line, they themselves don't have the matrilineal line. Now, this led me to trying to, you know, search the matrilineal line of Israel. Now, the scriptures say... And I know I'm talking fast, y'all. I hope y'all can keep up. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see if they're in. And in that day, there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Now, whenever it's talking about Canaanites, it's talking about Judah or Jerusalem. Only the southern kingdom not the northern kingdom because judah married a canaanite woman and had children with her and the jewish people are their offspring so no if we are going by what the mother is you guys are canaanites you're not israelites the israelites are afro-asiatic people and we're going to prove that today okay they're afro-indians we're going to prove that today so let's let's get into it. We don't need this. We don't need this. We're going to prove that today. Okay. Now this also explains Ezekiel 16 because the, you know mother she had brought this down and I was like, "Okay, the Holy Spirit." And I said, okay, now Ezekiel 16 makes so much sense because if you understand uh, Ezekiel 16, it's talking about Jerusalem, Judah. Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations and say, thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother was a Hittite. Now the word father can mean grandfather and the word mother can mean grandmother. So what it was saying was that the, these people in the land of Judah are Canaanites. Thy father, uh, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Now, mind you, it say Jerusalem. So it's talking about Judah. Okay. And this is why they only call themselves Jews. They don't call themselves any other tribe. They only call themselves Jews, but they are only connected paternally. They, again, do not have the matrilineal uh, descent. And we're going to talk about what the matrilineal descent is. So this took me into... Uh, 
looking into Sarah's uh, genealogy. Now, why am I looking into Sarah's genealogy? Because she was the wife of Abraham. And if you look up Israel and the Hebrew concordance, I also have a book at home called the uh, Woman's Dictionary. It tells you that the name of Israel is from Sarah and El because Israelites are really a matriarchy. They are not a patriarchy. And, you know, this is something that you got to subscribe to my channel that I teach on if you want to know more about. I'm not going to really get into that in the video. We're only going to talk about um, the maternal line genealogy. Now, the word Israel comes from Sarah and El. Sarah and El. Israel is directly connected to Sarah's name because she was the mother of the race and you have to be from her line to be considered an Israelite right so Israel comes from the name Sarah L that's important for y'all to know now the book that I have at home the dictionary of women the encyclopedia for women I forget exactly what the name of it is but it's something like that it talks about how the Israelites were really a matriarchy and they were named after the after Sarah Sarah L as I just showed you on the Hebrew concordance that the word for Israel is from Sarah and L Israel because Sarah is her name Israel so Sarah remember her name was changed to Sarai okay so you got s in israel you got s a r they got uh s a r i sarai and then l so it's it's literally her name mixed up okay so israel is comes from sarah l keep that in mind so i said okay now in order for us to understand who the true israelites is we need to understand the maternal line we need to find out the maternal uh, line of these people. Let me start asking out of this some of the stuff that we don't need because I got so many uh, books up, uh, so many pages open because I was this took me a, a minute to get. Okay, now that led me into looking for Sarai's lineage. And where she came from. And so I started li looking into the linguistics of her name. Before her name was Sarah, it was Sarai. That led me to... Let me find it. Let me find it. I told you I got a lot of pages open. That led me to the Mongols. Now, this is where I got stuck yesterday and I had to pray. So it was Sarai was a city. This is the only thing that I could find on the name Sarai. S-A-R-A-I. This was the only thing that I could find on it. Sarai also transcribed as Sarai, S-A-R-A-J or S or S-A-R-A-Y from Persian. It means mansion or court or city. It was the name of two possible cities near the lower Volga that served successively as the effective capitals of the Golden Horde. A Turkel Mongol kingdom which ruled much of northwest northwestern Asia and Eastern Europe in the thirteenth and fourteenth century. This is considerable disagreement among scholar scholars about the correspondence between specific archaeological sites. I'm so tongue twisted because I'm just trying to hurry up and get it out. <laughs> and the various references to Sarai. Now they tell you that Sarai means Sarai blessed by God. So they are literally talking about Sarah from the scripture. So this is the only thing that I can find on Sarai. And I said, Turkish Mongols, that don't make sense. <laughs> so Sarai was a Turkish Mongol. And I was like, okay, this ain't adding up. <laughs> and I had to literally pray on this thing, y'all. I had to literally pray on this thing. This was the only place that I can find her name as far as linguistically. Now, to, after I prayed today, I woke up and it all makes sense. Now, I say, Oh, Sarai was established by the Mongol ruler Batu Khan. Now, I know Khan is K H N, which literally is K H A M, which is calm, which is calm. Now, if you understand that the Chinese 
were descended from Africans, from um, Hamites. You know, a lot of Hebrew Israelites let us say, oh, we're not Hamites. We're not Hamites. Technically, you are. You are a mix of Hamitic and Semitic. You are both. Because Sarai was a Hamite. She was a Mongolian Ham Hamite. And we're going to talk about that today. That's why it that's why old Sarai, that's why it said no, it wasn't they she wasn't a Turco Mongol, she was a Hamitic Mongolian. Now the Mongols, they you know, went in, they probably mixed with the Turks, but originally they were Hamitic Mongolians, okay? And I know I'm probably losing y'all, but stay with me and you will understand this. You will understand where I'm, y'all will, y'all will understand. Okay. Stay with me. It said it was established by the Mongol ruler Batukan. Now again, K-H-A-N is calm because N and M is interchangeable and it's literally ham. Calm is the same word for ham. So Batu ham, that's might as well what you say. That might as well be what this say. Letting you know that um, the Mongolians were descended of the Hamites. Now, it was a um, Chinese doctor and a geneticist, and he talked about. I shared this video, and this I couldn't believe that I couldn't. I didn't think about this yesterday when I got caught up on my because I got caught up on Mongolian. You know, when we hear certain words, our mind automatically go to like these white looking people and we're like, OK, wait, what? This ain't adding up. But that's not true. The original Mongolians were darker skinned people. And I'm going to we going to stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. OK. Was established by the Mongol ruler Batu Khan. Now, again, Khan is hermetic. So he was a. Uh, a Mongolian Hamitic. He was a half Indian, half uh, Kemetic. And that's what our people are. So keep that in mind. Now this, this, when I woke up today and I was, it, I had to understand, remember that the Chinese people were originally um, Hamitic. Okay. Now let's see. Okay, so here it is. Chinese geneticists tried to prove that the Chinese are genetically... Okay, DNA proves that modern Chinese people are direct descendants of Africans. Okay, China's original black African roots. Okay, so Africans in ancient China. Now, if you guys know anything about the Nagas, okay, let me pull that up. Now, this didn't make sense to me until... Um, I remembered that it didn't make sense. So then I went to look up, um, we're going to talk about the Nagas in a minute, but I went to look up Mongoloid because I had to understand what was really going on. Okay. I had to really understand what was going on. Bear with me, y'all, because I got um, all of this stuff pulled up here. This was about the Jewish people being Canaanites again. So them people over there is Canaanites, okay? So when they talking about the matriar matriarchal line, y'all make sure y'all let them know y'all don't got the matriarchal line either. Y'all mother was a Canaanite. Um, y'all foremother was a Canaanite. So where is it? Where is it? I might have to just type it back in. Cause again, I got on so much crap that I don't even know what is what no more. 1130 Lucy Porter near Burkhardt room. Oh Lord, this is not Burkhard a good room, video to do at work. It's going to take too long. Not my resident Burkhard calling. Burkhardt room 2, 
1,126. I'm just going to type it in. 1,130 Lucy Porter near Burke Harbor. 1,130. Now it's all started to make sense. No, Lord, walkies. Be quiet. It all started to make sense when I looked up the word mongoloid. It's saying an absolute racial grouping of various people indigenous to large parts of Asia, the Americas, and some regions in Europe and Oceanian. Okay, when you look up Oceanian, it tells you that uh, it is a geographical region that includes Australasia, Melanesia, Micronesia, Polynesia. Now, I was doing, um, I was watching some of the Chinese people, you know, DNA, because, you know, people do their DNA videos on YouTube. So I typed in Chinese people take DNA tests. And I've seen that a lot of people, um, some of them had DNA from Oceanian. Now, why is that important? Because my DNA test also had DNA from Oceania, and I couldn't figure out where that, where that came from. So let's look here. <clears throat> so you're going to see small percentages of Asian on here. So you got East Asian 0.3% on this one. Um, East Asian 0.33% on this one. North Asian 0.65%. Um, Arctic, Amira, Indian, 0.57%. Melanesian, 0.89%. Middle East, 2.89%. So, you know, um, I was like, okay, on this one, you see Austronesian, 0.76%. East, South Asian, 0.29%. Near East. 3.28 percent this one let's see what's on this one indian 0.39 percent um samo and i think that's like samoan 0.1.17 percent 1.17 percent west asian 1.94 percent um, let's see on this one, because it's different tests. Like the one that I did that said West Semitic, that was literally an African only test. And that's what tripped me out because I was like West Semitic on the African only test. And that's what prompted me to start doing this research. So, uh, Siberian 0.79%, which is around Russia area, which is around the area where the Mongols was ruling. Now on my true ancestry, on my old one, because um, I got two. I did an old one, but I couldn't get back in it. Um, the golden horde popped up as in my DNA, okay? So on this one, we got East Asian 0.21%. Um, Southeast Asian 0.5%. On this one, we got um, East Asian 0.52%, Australasian 0.73%, Siberian 0.98%. Now, on this one, we got the Khoisan. We're going to talk about the Khoisan. Khoisan 5.9%. And look down here. This was a Japanese test. This was a Japanese DNA test, and mine came back 86 8.67 Japanese. Why? Because we have mongoloid DNA. Now we probably after slavery when they just they probably took us and then Africans and we've been in America intermarrying. So a lot of our DNA has become um small percentages because our modern population have been intermarrying with Hamites that are not Kushites. See the mongoloid hamitic people that sarah came from was the kushites she was kushite mongoloid and we're going to talk about this even when you read in judah 5 it calls um the israelites chaldeans and we're going to look at we're going to look at this we're going to look at all of this 1130 lucy porter near burkhardt i'll be right back y'all i gotta stop